uh, we're at the end of the series, Toxic. Say toxic. Toxic. Some of you are like, praise Jesus. Uh, whew, I'm tired of toxic. Uh, but hey, uh, next week we're going to start a new series called uh, Camp fire song, uh, story, campfire stories, sorry, I probably should say it right, uh, campfire stories, and we're going to be looking at uh, some of the stories, uh, the parables that Jesus spoke, and we're going to be going through that through the summer, so that's exciting, so come back, we'll have our kumbaya moment, campfire stories, so uh, yeah, some of you are like, what am I talking about, but anyways, just come back next week, so I'll give you something to look forward to, but uh, join us for that, but toxic, we're wrapping up toxic, and what we've been talking about about is the poisonous behavior that can destroy our life. I mean, if we really let the toxicness, our toxic thoughts, remember we talked about that, our toxic words, uh, we've talked about all these things. If we allow them to take control of our lives, they can po and poison us and ultimately destroy our walk with Jesus Christ. And today we're going to kind of wrap up this series by talking about toxic religion. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, toxic religion. Say that with me. Toxic religion. Toxic religion. Uh, I've had people come up to me, you know, they know I'm a pastor, and they'll talk to me, and David, I don't believe in religion. I don't believe in religion. Don't come at me with all that garbage, all that stuff. And I always respond the same way. I don't believe in religion either. And they always look at me, well, you're a pastor. What do you mean you don't believe in religion? So well, I don't believe in religion. I'm not here to worship religion. I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm here to worship Jesus Christ. If you don't come here to worship Jesus Christ, you're missing it. You're missing the point. Do we have to say it again? It's all about Jesus, period. That's who we're coming to worship. That's who we're coming to praise. And you should come looking to serve him. We get to come and worship Jesus. We get to come and bring him praise. We get to come and thank him for all that he's given us in life. And we get to thank him for even through the struggles, how he'll heal our heart and he'll give us peace that we can't explain. He'll heal our marriages. He'll heal our children. He'll heal relationships we have. And he takes care of us. And we get to come and celebrate with him what he's doing. Uh, religion? Pfft, you know, whatever. Who cares about religion? Uh, if you have your Bible, open up to Galatians. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, there's one probably near you. You can have that Bible if you need it. Uh, it'll be on the screen. But if you need a Bible, you can take that one home for you, even on the patio, even online uh, broadcast. If you need a Bible, let us know. Uh, Galatians chapter 1, starting at verse 6, uh, Paul's writing. This is what he says. He says, I am shocked. I'm shocked that you are turning away so soon from God who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends, pretends to be the good news. Verse 7 says, but it is not the good news at all. You are, this is, pay attention to this, you are being fooled by those who deliberately twist, say twist, twist the truth concerning Christ. Whoa, did you hear that? You're deliberately being fooled by those who are trying to twist the good news of Christ. A toxic religion is twisting the truth. Toxic religion is twisting the truth. Uh, toxic re uh, religion is when people come in and they distort or twist the truth, the word of God. And what, what Paul is talking about is what, what, would Paul, what Paul would do is he would go in and he would start churches. If you read the book of Acts, it kind of lays this out about how Paul did this. But Paul would go into regions and preach the good news of Jesus Christ, and people would believe in Jesus, just like hopefully most of us do. Uh, they would believe in Jesus. We would choose to give our lives to Jesus. And then Paul would start a church. And he would show them how to, hey, this church is about Jesus. It's not about religion. It's not about things. It's about Jesus. And then over time, people would come into the church and they would say, oh, it's not just about Jesus. If you really want to worship Jesus, you also have to do these few things. And they would start adding some rules or start adding some things. Hey, you know, if you're really a good Christian, you'll do this stuff. 
because it's really about this stuff. You got to add that in there and whatever that stuff is because we do it all the time. It's very common and we even do it today. We allow stuff, stuff to slide in. Usually we call them rules and we say, oh, well, yes, Jesus is awesome, but if you really believe in Jesus and you're truly a follower in Jesus, then you'll dress a certain way. Well, we're all in trouble with that because our church doesn't do that, right? Yeah, it's the pastor's fault, I know, right? Or, or, or y- y- we have to give money, so much money, or we have, to, we have to read the Bible every day, or we have to be praying every day, or we have to be coming to church every Sunday, and we add these rules. Now, this stuff is not bad. They're not bad things. But we start to twist the truth and say, if you don't do these things, then you're really not a believer in Jesus Christ. And we slowly twist the good news of Christ. This is what Paul's talking about right here, right? A twisting of the truth. And slowly we drift away from it's all about Jesus, period, to it's all about Jesus if I give enough money. If I read my Bible enough, if I pray enough, if I, if I help people enough, if I'm kind enough, if I'm a good enough person, and we start adding all these things on top of Jesus, really the good news is all about Jesus, period. It's all about him. But we get this twist, and it happens very easily and very subtly, and we slowly drift into it. We have to guard ourselves to make sure our faith doesn't become a toxic religion. It's not about religion, right? Uh, Toxic religion judges the cover, not the book. Toxic religion judges the cover, not the book. Now, if you're a high school student, this is how you make all your decisions, right? What is the cover? How thick is it? Okay, no, I'm not doing it. Anyways, right? uh, School's out. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be bringing school back up. Uh, Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 23, verse 25. He says, what sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites. Did you notice that list just went down? You teachers of religious law, you Pharisees, you hypocrites. Whoa, hey, Uh, Jesus isn't holding any punches there. For you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. A toxic religion is a fraud. Toxic religion is empty. Toxic religion is making myself look spiritual on the outside. So when you guys look at me, you go, oh, he's so spiritual. But inside, I'm dead. It, the cover and the book don't match. I'm giving you a good cover, but the inside, it's a shell game. Shell game? You ever been scammed before? Sure you have. That's toxic religion. Our family uh, got caught up watching on YouTube uh, this guy called Patty Mayo. Did you ever hear of him? Yeah, none of you have, but if you're probably under 20, you've heard of him. Uh, you know, Patty Mayo, uh, he was this bounty, bounty hunter, and uh, he did these shows on YouTube, and he'd go around, and he would uh, arrest these people. And my family, we started watching this. We're like, this guy is crazy, man. The weird situations he found himself in. And basically what he was is a, a, a bonds guy. You know, uh, He would go in. The people would skip bail. So he would, that's why he's called the bounty hunter. He'd go out and bring these people back. And so he'd get in all these crazy situations, and he's tasing people, and you know, just ridiculous stuff. And we're like, this is, this is crazy, uh, but kind of cool. I mean, right? Let's watch him. He's going to tase someone. It's going to be kind of fun, right? Uh, and so we got caught up in it, and then we discovered that Patty Mayo was fake. We're like, what? It was all fake. Patty Mayo's an actor. The people he was tasing was acting. I was all disappointed, man. What? I thought that tasing was real. It was all set up. It was scripted. He was just like doing a show. And we were like, oh, we felt scammed. Our family was like, how could we be so stupid? How could we fall for that? That's toxic religion. Fake religion. A lot of people fall into that as, 
hey, I have to live this shell game, and I'm going to give this appearance that it's all about Jesus, period. But really, I don't care about Jesus. I care about myself, and I care about looking good, and I care about people patting me on the back. Not really Jesus, because inside I'm greedy, and, and, and I'm lustful, and I'm adulterous, and, and, and I have bad motives, but no one knows that because I can look clean. On the outside. That's what the religious leaders were doing. That's what Jesus was handling. He was saying, no, that's not what it's about. That's toxic religion. The truth is, the cover has to match the book. The outside has to match what's inside. And if it doesn't, we're just living a toxic religion. And it's toxic because we tell people this is what it's really about. You just got to look the look, live it, walk it, but you can be dead on the inside. And people realize, oh, this is what real religion is? This is how kids fall away from Jesus because they're raised in a home where parents go, oh, Jesus, yeah. But then at home, we're horrible parents and our kids are raised in this environment. And they go, is this what Jesus is about? Just when I leave the home? I just put on the image, but at home, I'm a horrible person, and I treat people like garbage, and they go, oh, I guess this is what religion is. Yeah, that's exactly what religion is. It's not a relationship with Jesus Christ, and this is what Jesus is talking about. The cover has to match the book. The outside has to match the inside. If our heart and our lifestyle doesn't match, we're just what Jesus said, hypocrites. And the world calls us on it, and we get busted over it. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we do. Let me just point that out for you. Some of you struggle with this. It doesn't matter what we do, because some of us get so caught up in, wait a minute, it's, it matters what I do. It, what do you mean? I'm supposed to be praying, aren't I? I'm supposed to be reading the Bible, aren't I? It doesn't matter what you do. What matters is what Jesus has done. Jesus is who matters. And we don't read our Bible because it's getting us to heaven or somehow saving us. We read our Bible because we fall in love with Jesus and we want to know him. And we want to be like him. And we can't get enough of them. We go, I want to read my Bible. I love Jesus. I want to carve out time in my life to spend time with him. And I want to experience him. But it doesn't save me. It doesn't make me holy. Jesus is the only one who does that. See, don't, don't get confused. Very often we slide into toxic religion and get confused. Toxic religion is about ego. Ego. Say ego. 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 I like saying that word. Ego, right? Uh, ego. Uh, the fastest sign that we are sliding into toxic religion is when our ego starts to tell us that, hey, you've done a good job. You are turning into something very spiritual. You should pat yourself on your back. You are pious. Wow. Compare yourself to other people? Man, you are so much better than they are. Look at these people. Pathetic. How spiritual I am. Toxic religion right there. And it starts right here. We start looking around and comparing and go, oh, look at everybody else, right? I went to church with a guy who uh, used to keep a list in the front of his Bible. He'd write it down of everybody he saved. Everybody he saved, and he had this long list one day, and he was bragging about it and had his Bible at church, and he's like, oh, look at, look at the list I got of everybody I saved. Look at that. Oh, it's on the next page, too. Look at all these people. And he was impressed, and he was just bragging, and I was like, wow. And he came up to me and said, Pastor, look at all these people I've saved. He goes, he wanted to compare. How many of you saved, Pastor? How many of you? Where am I at compared to you? Because you're a pastor, so I want to know where I'm at. How many of you saved? And I said, zero. And he went, ah. Oh. And he looked at me with shame and said, you call yourself a pastor? Pastor, you shouldn't tell people that. You need to start saving people. And I said, well, that's impossible because only Jesus saves people. 
I don't save anybody. All I do is tell people about Jesus. The Holy Spirit brings conviction. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus rose again. Jesus is the one who saves us. I'm just a human who needs saving. Nobody I've ever saved. He was dumbfounded by that statement. Hey, go check your ego, buddy. I didn't say that, though. I thought it, but I didn't say it. Luke chapter 18. Verse 9 <laughs> says, then Jesus told this story. Hey, it's like a campfire story. He told this story to some who had great confidence. Listen to this. He told the story to some people who had great confidence in their own righteousness. Uh-oh. Do you hear the ego already? And, scor and uh, scorned everyone else. He said, two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a despised tax collector. Now, I kind of thought all tax collectors were despised, but I mean, okay, he's making a distinction here. Uh, we could just say despised IRS man, anyways, right? Uh, it says, the Pharisee stood by himself, and he prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not like other people. Cheaters, sinners, adulterers, all those people. I'm not like them. I'm up here. I'm spiritual, right? He says, I'm certainly not like that tax collector. Verse 12, I fast twice a week and I give you a tenth of my income. Well, oh my goodness. Praise God. Wow, this guy is just, whoo. He, I mean, he's just, I mean, there's Jesus and him. I'm sorry, Jesus, Billy Graham, and him. You know, I mean, right there, I don't know what it is, right? Billy Graham would probably go, whoa, 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 don't put me up there. Right, that's right. Uh, it, I mean, this guy had a, quite an ego, didn't he? And he's praying out loud, and he's letting people know how great he is. Awesome. You know, the reality is, we're not spiritual because of what we do. It's not about what we do. Toxic religion puts the onus on us, what we do. We love to point out who's right and who's wrong. Oh, I'm right because I tithe. I'm right because I show up to church. You're wrong because you went to the channel. Now, I would agree with that on Sunday morning. But anyways, <laughs> I'm just saying, that's right. That's right. You're wrong because you don't dress a certain way or you don't say certain words. You don't talk in King James. Thy hath welcomed thee, my brother hath to the Lord hath. You know? you're, you're not as spiritual if, if, if I am because I speak it King James, it is, right? No, no, you just read the New Living Bible. Oh, sinner. Oh, wow. Right? And we love to get into this comparison game. I love the question I get from you guys sometimes. Which Bible is the right Bible, Pastor? The answer is the one you read, right? <laughs> Just read it. Stop fighting and open it. Read it. Thy Bible is. Right? I don't know. We get this comparison game. What is right and what is wrong? Now, again, I'm not saying that dressing a certain way is wrong. I'm not saying talking a certain way is wrong. But it doesn't make you righteous. It doesn't make you spiritual. It doesn't save you. Only Jesus does those things. He makes us righteous. He makes us holy. He saves us. We don't. The reason we like rules is because it's a comparison game. Oh, well, I'm not like the tax collector. I'm not bad like him. So Jesus, clearly you're going to accept me. But Jesus says, you look good on the outside, but the inside, you're dead. You don't really love me. Kim and I were walking. Uh, Kim's my wife, by the way. Uh, not just some strange woman I hang out with. Uh, you know. Kim and I were walking in Fort Worth, Texas, and uh, we're walking on the street one evening. 
And we're just strolling along. Uh, Fort Worth downtown is a great place to be. Anyways, advertise. My Fort Worth people can testify to that. So uh, it's a great place. We're just walking down the street, enjoying company. We didn't have children yet, so we still had a life. And so, uh, you know, we're just walking along. And uh, we still loved each other back then. We held hands. And, you know, we looked at each other lovingly. You know, uh, you know we didn't get to that cold, hard place some of you are at now. I'm just kidding. Yeah. So uh, tell your wife you love her. Anyway, so, uh, right. And so we're just strolling along, and there's this guy in camouflage, uh, all camouflage. He's standing on a milk crate, you know, that little box. Some of you don't know what that is, you know, a milk crate. And uh, he's standing on one of those, and he's got a megaphone, and he's yelling at everybody on the street, you're going to hell, you sinners! You know, and I'm like, oh, crap, look what we're going towards, you know. And we just, Kim and I keep strolling, and Kim's like, don't worry, honey, let's just move it along. She squeezed a little tighter, not because she wanted to keep me safe, because she wanted to keep me shut up. So, you know, it's like, come on, you know, let's uh, just get past this guy, right? And and we start to walk past him, and he turns that megaphone towards Kim and I, and he says, fornicators! I'm like, what's a fornicator? I don't know. He said, fornicator, you sinners, you're going to hell! And I said, no, I'm not. I stopped, and Kim kept going, what? And he said, I'm not going to hell. And he said, you're going to hell! With that megaphone right in my face. I said, why are you screaming? You know, I said, you're going to hell. I said, no, I'm not. He said, yes, you are. I said, no, I'm not. He said, yes, you are. Kim said, how old are you? Right. I said, you don't know anything about me. And he said, but you're going to hell. And Kim pulled me away. And I said, but I'm going to punch him in the face, Kim. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And she, 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 people like this, right? Uh, and he felt like, oh, he knows nothing about us. But yes, I mean, and I get his intention. He's trying to lead people towards Jesus. But I'm not sure if calling you a fornicator and you're going to hell for walking on the streets of Fort Worth and not knowing anything about him is the best way to go about it. Right? I'm not sure. I mean, just my opinion. Maybe his heart was in the right place. But I'm not sure how many names he could write in the front of his Bible for doing that. You know, I'm not sure he's being successful or not. And we love to slide in this role of where we stand up on a soapbox and we look down at everybody. You know, now we have our glasses and we look over the brim and we look down like that school teacher used to do when she was grading my spelling paper. You know, anyways, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how to spell all. Anyways, but, and, that, and that judgment, right, of somehow you're not worthy because you're not living up to what I say you should be doing. Well, last time I checked, you didn't write this book. So I don't have to live up to your expectations or somebody's idea of what is right and what is wrong. Toxic religion, right? Again, it doesn't matter what we do. What matters is what Jesus did. He's who matters. The good news is all about Jesus, period. Okay, this is what we need to know. The good news is all about Jesus, period. Plain and simple. Romans chapter 3, starting in verse 20. For no one can ever, do you hear that? No one can ever, 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 be made right with God by doing what the law commands. That's rules. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. Did you hear that? The law just simply shows we're a disaster. That's what it shows. We're screw-ups. Verse 21, but now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law, as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. Well, this is pretty cool. Verse 22, we are made right with God by placing we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. See, it's not about what we've done. It's about what Jesus has done. The good news is about Jesus. The good news isn't about David. It's about Jesus. Jesus is the one who matters. Jesus did all the work. That's good news, because if it's dependent upon me or us, we're in trouble. We're, my wife will tell you that. We're in trouble. We cannot earn Jesus' acceptance. Okay, 
That's toxic religion. We cannot earn Jesus' acceptance. Romans 3.20 told us that. For no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. None of us, right? Following a bunch of rules isn't going to make you right with Jesus. It's not going to make you right with Jesus. Uh, reading your Bible every day, uh, praying every day, coming to church, uh, giving, being kind-hearted, all those things are wonderful things. There's nothing wrong with them. I encourage you to do those things. We should do them, but they don't make us right with Jesus. All they simply are is a response to our love for Jesus. That's it, right? No more than buying flowers means you're married. Buying flowers doesn't mean you're married. Doesn't mean they're married. No, it's when you say, I commit my life to you. Buying flowers is just an outward expression of what's going on in my heart. That's the outward expression. I choose to marry you. I'm committing my life to you. And because I love you so much, I'm going to make sure I walk and hold your hand. I'm going to make sure I tell you I love you every day. I'm probably going to buy you flowers when I screw up. I'm going to say I'm sorry. We're going to have kids together. We're going to stumble through it and we're going to figure it out. Hope they don't kill us. <laughs> and we're going to make it. All those things don't make us married. It is the commitment to choose to be married that makes us married. It's the same way with Christ. The actions don't make us a follower of Jesus. That's a response, response because we love Jesus. Rules prove that we need a Savior. All rules do is prove that we need a Savior. The, the point of the law, the point of the Ten Commandments, the point of the whole Old Testament. People read it and go, my goodness, the Old Testament, that was insane. What's going on? And I go, yeah, I know. It's about rules. It's about earning yourself to salvation. And you notice the whole Testament, the Old Testament is way longer than the New Testament because the whole Testament is proving to us that no matter how much we have Christ and how many rules there are, that we cannot possibly live up to his perfection, perfect perfection standard. We can't do it. So we need something else. We cannot be good enough. And even if you were able to follow all the rules, your ego and pride would get in the way. Ooh, I'm better than everybody else. Look at me. And Jesus would say, well, you just blew it there. You're out. I, uh, I, it, we can't. Romans 3.20, for the law simply shows us how sinful we are. The rules just prove how much we mess up. You start reading the rules and you go, wow, yikes. Especially like the one, one, women, when you're on your period, they have to leave camp for seven days. I'm kind of in favor of that one, but uh, <clears throat> it doesn't work out that way. I mean, God gave me three daughters, so, you know, it's, it gets rough sometimes, but <laughs> all the husbands are like. We're just real and upfront here. Anyways, right? <laughs> Don't mention that one to my wife. Yeah, I said three daughters, not wife. Anyways, right? Uh, let's be clarifying that, right? I mean, the rules just prove how sinful we are. Just how much in need we are of a Savior. It is not about religion. It is about faith alone. It's not about religion. It's about faith alone. That's it. Romans 3.22, we are made right with God. Pay attention. How are we made right with God? By placing our faith in Jesus Christ. I did not hear by reading our Bible. I did not hear by giving money. I did not hear by, oh, forgiving every offense that someone has done against me. All those things are wonderful. We should do those things. But that's not what saves us. It doesn't make us right with Jesus because we do those things. Only by faith in Jesus Christ. Only by faith. We are made right with God by placing our faith 
in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. It's all about Jesus, period. There it is. Faith, right? Religion doesn't save us. It's our faith in Jesus Christ that saves us. Religion doesn't make us spiritual. It's faith in Jesus that transforms us and makes us holy. Religion doesn't make us right. It just proves that we're wrong. It's faith in Jesus and Jesus dying on the cross, rising again, and putting our faith in him that Jesus then says, I forgive you, you're holy, your sins are gone. It is faith alone, not religion. Faith alone, not religion. Jesus, back to his parable, he told Luke chapter 18, verse 13, he said, but the tax collector, remember the Pharisee, but the tax collector stood at a distance and he dared not even lift his eyes to heaven. As he prayed, instead he beat his chest in sorrow. Lord, I'm not a good man. Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. Jesus said, I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, not the guy who did all the stuff, not the guy who wore the perfect clothes, who gave his money, who read the Bible, who did the spiritual things, not him, but the sinner who did none of that returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Toxic religion is exalting ourselves. It's saying, this is about me and what I'm doing. But Jesus says, real religion is about faith. No, I'm not good enough. I can't earn it. And Jesus, I need somebody else to save me. That's real. That's what Jesus desires. And that's what we're doing here. Jesus, I need you. And without you, I have nothing. And the reason I do what I do is not because it saves me. I do it because I love you. And I desire to be like you. And I desire to be with you because you are my God. And you are worthy of having my whole life because you died on the cross, you rose again, and you are alive today. Bow your heads with me. Close your eyes. Let me just encourage you as you sit there for a moment with your head bowed and your eyes closed. I just ask you to do that so you can focus in on yourself, not be distracted. But let me encourage you to have an honest, open-hearted discussion between you and God. And I encourage you to say, Jesus, what is in my heart? Am I just being toxic and putting up a front on the outside? Or do I really have a relationship with you? Is my faith really in you? And Jesus is going to put us in situations where we're going to have to say, do I trust in Jesus or do I trust in something else? And he's going to put us in those situations to teach us what faith means. And the reality is, is your faith in Jesus? Jesus died on the cross. He rose again and he's alive today. And if you've never prayed to give him your life, to put your faith in him, I encourage you right now. It's an opportunity. There's nothing else you can do. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. Your parents can't give it to you. It is something we have to choose on our own. And I encourage you to pray right now if you've never given your faith to Jesus Christ, right now to say, Jesus, I believe in you. And just say those words in your heart. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe that you came and you lived a perfect life. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. And Jesus, I believe you're alive right now. Jesus, I choose to give you my life. Please forgive me of my sins. Make me righteous because I'm not. And Jesus, I throw myself before you because of what you have done, not because of what I've done. I 
challenge you to humble yourself and pray that prayer. Jesus, I just pray that you humble us, that you are the one and only God, that without you we have nothing. And yet you love us enough that you came and you gave us everything. Thank you, Jesus. May you always be glorified. May we respond to you in love by how we live. But may we recognize that it's only by faith in you that we are saved in the first place. Praise you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.